when I started, I was at zero. I had no clients, no nothing. And then the growth partner gave me that direction. I started just taking action on the direction that Jacob and Jordan and all the other awesome people inside the program had given me. And since then, I signed my first client within two and a half weeks or so of joining. It's a 5K deal per month and then the 10% revenue share. So that's 60,000 for the year. And that's uh, fully locked in for the year long contract, yeah? Yeah, fully locked in. The only regret I have is not doing this a year ago when I first started following Jacob on Twitter because, man, I don't even want to think of about where I'd be right now if I'd done that. Really great to have you here. Yeah, thanks been, for having me. Uh, no problem. A little bit quicker than we probably thought. Uh, who would have guessed in, in five weeks or so we'd be already kind of talking. While we're here, do you want to just tell everyone a little bit about kind of your experience, where you were before, where you're up to now? Yeah, absolutely. So when I joined, I'd been doing a lot of research. I'd been trying to learn all the skills on my own. I'd say the biggest issue that I had was jumping back and forth between all the different potential business models. I had no idea what I wanted to go after, starting an agency, real estate, all sorts of different things. Everything that you can find on Money Twitter, I just knew I wanted to start my own business. And so I, I had a really hard time narrowing down. I knew I had the skills to do it, but I really didn't know what direction I wanted to take. So that's when I reached out to Jacob. I'd been following him on Twitter for a while, seeing all the great content that he was putting out. That was the moment when everything really changed for me because Jacob the biggest thing that he told me in that call was we can give you that direction and you'll have the support you need going down that direction and that's what really sold me I knew I just wanted a direction and then once I got that direction I could go all in on whatever that direction may be so when I started I was at zero I had no clients no nothing and then the growth partner gave me that direction I started just taking action on the direction that Jacob and Jordan and all the other awesome people inside the program had given me. And since then, I signed my first client within two and a half weeks or so of joining. So it, it moved incredibly fast. It's been awesome. I've had great support the entire way through the growth partner program. You said you signed your first client. Now, that's not a typical client. How much is that client worth to you over the next 12 months? Well, uh, I mean, a, a big part of that depends on how great results I can get them because uh, there's a 10% revenue share baked into that. But um, it's a 5K deal per month and then the 10% revenue share. That's so 60,000 for the year. And that's uh, fully locked in for the year long contract, yeah? Yeah, fully locked in. I mean, th there is one break clause, but we're not gonna let that happen. Fantastic. We don't typically work with beginners. It's not really the market we're going after. And you're probably one of the only people I've actually decided to let in. There's some situational stuff and, and where you were that I thought this would be a good fit. And obviously from my side, I guess I was right in that sense. But like, what made you join even though you kind of knew it maybe wasn't 100% tailored to you in your specific situation? I think the biggest thing was just that confidence in my own ability to once I have a direction kind of go all in and take action on that. I, I remember that call that you and I had and it honestly felt like I was selling to you more than you were selling to me. I knew from everything that I'd seen that you put out, I mean, you and Jordan both put out so much valuable stuff for free and I'd seen all that. And I knew that if that's what you were putting out for free, I wanted to know what was inside your paid program. That's really why I joined. I just knew that with that guidance, I, I could put in the work and I would see results. You said before that you were doing a ton of different stuff. You were trying to figure out this kind of path on your own. And there's a lot of people in your situation who know they have the ability, they have all the skills, they back themselves, but maybe just don't have the clarity, that pathway. What were you trying to do before? And what would you say to those people that was kind of the biggest breath of fresh air, for example, when you kind of decided to take that leap? I think I would say the most difficult thing for me was I would zero in on something new like every two weeks and I would start going down that path and then I'd hit some major roadblock without really knowing anyone who had taken a similar path. I, I really struggled. I just kept getting hit up on those different roadblocks and didn't know what to do to get past that. Some other good opportunity would arise. I'm like, okay, this is going to be it. And I'd go down that path. And I had the classic entrepreneur kind of syndrome where I just wanted to jump in between all these different things. And I just couldn't get past that like two or three week hurdle of actually putting it into action. So the advice that I would give to anybody in that same position would be to find someone who's done it before and can help you go down that path and then just commit all into that path. Stop mm -hmm. looking at anything else. And what made you finally decide on the growth partner? Because obviously 
it sounds like you were looking at a ton of different stuff. You had all these different options. When was it that you were like, it clicked and you're like, this is it. This is exactly what I need to do. This is going to work. I think what clicked for me was I, I knew I wanted to kind of go down either the agency growth partner route. And I'd seen with agencies, I'd seen like the struggle to get to that to break past like that 20, 30 K because you need to take on so many different clients. And that just didn't really seem like a sustainable business model or sustainable way to grow for me. Like having to take on 20, 30 clients to even get to like that 50 K mark. So I think that's what really resonated with me is the ability to take on fewer clients and really go a lot deeper with every single one of your clients. I never wanted to be in that position where I'm not able to deliver for my clients. I wanted to have that like deeper relationship with every single one of them so that I could get them amazing results. And that's what really stood out to me about that growth partner model is the ability to grow quickly while getting great results for your clients because you have a, such a close partnership with them. Yeah, 100%. And on that, obviously, having less experience than a lot of the other guys in here, the, the results is a big part. You, you're charging a lot. You need to show the value. Just how important has it been having not just me, but the team there to, I guess, support you along that side of things as you step into to new territory? It's made all the difference because I, I literally ask four or five questions in Slack every single day. I'm, I'm starting to feel bad about that. But, yeah, never feel bad. Never feel bad. That's what we're here for. But it's just so nice to be able to, instead of going down, like hitting a roadblock and then going down a couple hour rabbit hole of trying to figure that out myself, I have access to lots of people who have done it the exact thing that I'm trying to do before and I can get a response and keep moving the business forward in like five minutes rather than mm. two or three hours. That's been the nicest thing about having that community of people who have done it before me is I don't think I've ever asked a unique question. Like everyone's had those same problems at some point. 100%. That's part of what we've tried to build is not just me and Jordan, but our team and everyone else in there supporting each other to push each other on and share all the insights that they have because we have some incredibly talented people in there and you can learn a lot from not just us but from everyone else as well and that's kind of the point of it now just to kind of spin the conversation a minute like you obviously went from zero to 5k and i think you said two and a half weeks that's quick like to hit 5k a month that's really quick and i've actually told you now to stop bringing on new clients otherwise i'm sure you'd probably already be at 10k a month is the honest truth how did you actually do that because some people take years to get to that point where they've even got off the ground and you did it in two and a half weeks cash collected deal signed locked in for a year straight which again most people do maybe one-off contracts or one-off deals three-month deals you kind of had that locked in so what did you do differently i mean i'd say the the biggest thing that i did at first was just really a lot of re deep research into the actual niche that I was going to choose and who I was going to help as a growth partner. And that was definitely the most critical part. I got on dozens of interviews, I'd say, with the founders and CEOs of people within my niche. And I ran them through the questions that you gave me to really help go into that niche discovery. And as I started to do those interviews, I picked up on the key pain points that were very similar with all the different founders and CEOs that I was talking to. And I really tailored my marketing message around that. I would say the, the biggest thing that really helped me get my first client so quickly was the model itself, because I actually found my first client from one of these kind of niche interviews that I was doing. The only reason we moved forward past the interview point was because he quickly asked me what I do. And I just told him the model I pretty much recited exactly what I've learned in the course and he loved the idea of having a partner and not just an outside marketing mm. agency. The model really helped me move forward from just niche discovery. And then beyond that, it was really just going all in for that one potential client. I sent him as much value as I possibly could. I literally did everything possible to make sure that he was getting on the next call. I just could not sleep at night just hoping that he was going to show up to the next call. So I spent all that time laying awake, just creating new content to send to him and just making a completely custom tailored plan for his business. At the end of the day, I'm pretty sure that's what helped me get it that quickly. And that was really everything. Like you did everything most people try and skip. So most people were like, yeah, let's just choose a random niche and let's just send tons of emails and then just try it up with it. Like you followed everything we said to a T, exactly how we said to do it. Obviously, when it came to the sales call, you just said that you kind of build that custom plan. I remember calling you the night before, I think it was like a Sunday night or something. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I was actually recording a video sales letter 
in the four seasons, I remember calling, there was like a piano playing in the background and just kind of talking you through like how you build the plan, how you put it together, how you present it, what you need to go through. Like, what was that process like? Cause that's, I think that's a big difference. Is like, if you were going in there unprepared, like you probably wouldn't have closed that deal. But from just taking the extra time to build the assets, to build the value, that was probably a big reason, no? It was a huge reason. And you asked what that process was like. It was really a oh crap moment because <laughs> I was still committing myself to just finding out more about the niche that I was going to target. And so when I actually started getting on sales calls and had to start making those proposals, that's why I reached out to you on like a Sunday morning, I think, and <laughs> was like, how do I do this? Help me. That made all the difference, just having your help on that. And I started to kind of see the bigger picture of exactly what I was trying to do. That really helped me just start creating assets around that and just going all in on it. Like one of the things he told me when we signed on was that the dedication that I had to him even before we were working together was one of the big reasons he was confident in my ability to get him results moving forward. Another thing that so many people I think do wrong in the service industry is just like, it's seen as a paycheck. It's seen as like transactional. Again, like when we talk about the growth partner model, like we do believe in those partnership approaches and i think you're a testament to that and, and how much you achieve to do what you've done about evidence or case studies like it's really difficult one of the biggest things i get asked well i don't have a case study like how can i do that from your experience how did you overcome that how did you get past like oh but like you're, you're new to this how do i trust you and still charge the amount that you did because most people go to like trials or performance only i'd say there was two big parts to it one was more internal like i was really struggling with even wanting to take on a client like this because i was a bit scared i was like what if i can't deliver and i care way more. like the paycheck really at this point to me doesn't matter too much i just want to get the kind of amazing results and so i was a little bit nervous to get over that leap and do that myself so I, I had to overcome that kind of personal obstacle first but then the second obstacle was i didn't find it too difficult to overcome because as soon as i had that conviction and belief in myself to deliver results then on the call it was really just about conveying that conviction to him and building that relationship really just trying to be as genuine and as honest with him as possible about my situation and what was going on just conveying that i am 100 percent convinced that i will get you these results that was the biggest thing for me is just having that conviction and being open and honest in in my conversations with the client fantastic stuff you also mentioned you were doing kind of niche interviews i know you said you did a dozen there but i think it was the the fourth or the fifth one they were like yeah let, let's let's kind of discuss this further it's interesting because most people don't even know how to choose a niche mm -hmm. and you were kind of going through the process and along the process just happened to sign your first deal like kind of talk us through that process how you chose a niche not just chose a niche chose one that you got a deal so quickly and for the the amount that you did yeah for me it was i mean you mentioned some people don't know how to even choose a niche that was me before i came into the program i would say the biggest thing for me was after i joined the growth partner program i hopped on a call with Nicola, and he basically got all the information about my background, what skills I had, and then basically was like, all right, you're doing this. And not in a bad way. He could just tell I was waffling back and forth about what I wanted to do. He could sense that. He's like, all right, let's just stick with this, run with it for now, find out as much as you can, and then we can always iterate later. I'd say that was the biggest thing is we, we picked a good niche that I had a background in. I could speak on the more technical side to the founders. And at the same time, we made sure that it was a kind of expanding niche. Then I just picked, like I just picked one and ran with it. That was the biggest thing that I had been struggling with up to that point. So that was really helpful. This is gonna work, pick it and let's run with it. It's one of the things I see all the time. People overcomplicate choosing the niche. I need to choose some brand new niche. And that's why everyone goes down like e-com and agency and SaaS where like, Actually, a lot of times the best ones are the ones no one else is even looking at. But then after you chose the niche as well, like you didn't just like write out some generic campaigns and start sending them. Like, you did this interview process, which is something that we've developed a lot more since you as well. What did that do for you and your confidence in terms of like being able to sell, being able to talk to these founders? Talk us through that process. It was really helpful in kind of developing just my ability to speak to these people and understanding their problems. I tried to not make it an interview, like I tried to make it a conversation like you and I are having now more 
then tell me your pain points, tell me your challenges. In the having those conversations, I picked up on some key similarities, and as I started to pick up on those key similarities, it then gave me confidence moving forward talking to other founders in my niche because I had a good sense for already what they were struggling with and how I could potentially help them. And I think that's why in like my fourth or fifth call, I was able to actually move that forward to a sales call because I understood exactly their pain points and they could tell that. And that came from those prior interviews. It's been only like four or five weeks since you, you joined at this point. Where do you think you'll be at the end of the five months with us? Honestly, I'm just at the point where I, I just want to get as good results as possible for the one client I have. But as soon as I start to feel confident in that delivery, I plan to move forward and just pull on one new partner every single month and hopefully hit that 40 to 50K mark within the next half year or so, I would say. Fantastic stuff. Luke, if you were looking to do something like this again, if you were starting from scratch, what advice would you give to yourself or someone else who's maybe doesn't have the clarity that they need to kind of press on and do what they want to do? What would that bit of advice be? The biggest thing that's changed for me was just picking something and committing to it all out. So I'd say the biggest bit of advice that I would give is just commit all into whatever you're going to do and stop going back and forth between all the different shiny objects out there. Pick something, commit to it, take all the action possible for that. That's gotten me very far in the last five weeks since I, I committed to doing that. And luckily I had a great program to, to kind of point me along that way. What was the, I guess, the biggest thing when you were inside like that maybe shocked you or I'm happy that I made the right decision? I, I thought at first it was all the kind of the course content because I watched that for a couple of days straight and was blown away by everything. But I would say really the biggest thing that shocked me, just the Slack channel that we have. There's tons of experts in there and can answer any question you have at any moment and the responsiveness there has been amazing. Also just the ability to reach out to you or any of the different team members and ask to hop on a quick conversation about any sort of challenge I've had, that's been something that I didn't expect and it's been amazing to have access to that. Great stuff, and if there was a, a potential future growth partner sitting on the sideline right now, not sure whether you should do it, what would you say to them? Do it, man. Stop thinking about doing it and actually do it. The only regret I have is not doing this a year ago when I first started following Jacob on Twitter because, man, I don't even want to think of about where I'd be right now if I'd done that. Stop thinking about it and just start, just do it. Luke, I love it. Appreciate your time for today. Um, that's all we have for now. And I look forward to collecting another case study in person next time when you absolutely crush it by the end of the year and you're at that kind of 40, 50k a month mark. Absolutely, man. Thanks for everything, Jacob. I just can't tell you how much I appreciate it.